Hello again, everybody. I have a video on the upcoming Ubuntu Cinnamon Remix, the 2004 Focal Fossa release. What I'm looking at today is the work in progress release. So this is available from SourceForge, and I got the inspiration to take a look at this from Linux++, which is a new newsletter that is published by a wonderful guy, Eric Londo. And if you haven't taken a look at this, this is only the second release, but it's a fantastic look at what's happening in Linux, some personal news from him, and then some, you know, as a shameless plug, I'll say that uh, he's doing a community focus, and uh, just so happens that I may have been the first guest on this community voice, um, so shameless plug there, but I really do appreciate Eric taking a look at some Linux news, and I like the layout and the topics that he's picked, so take a look if you haven't. In this latest edition, he talks about the Ubuntu Cinnamon Remix and the fact that Joshua was on the Mintcast podcast talking about this, and also that they're announcing the first 2004 development ISO, which I have downloaded, and this is the live environment. I'm going to run through installing that. And then I also want to take a look at a switcher, which is a layout tool, so a layout switcher written by Rick Shaw, and you can enable that by installing it. So I'll take a look at that as well. Let's start by just going ahead and installing here. Now, I'm just going to give some feedback as I go, because hopefully they watch this and maybe this is something they can take into consideration. I noticed this on the previous release that there is no link for the installer and I think that's a little confusing for folks because that's obviously what they're almost certainly wanting to do with a live ISO is to do the install. Maybe not, maybe they just want to test it out, but I think giving the user an option to just quickly get to that would be a good idea. Now it is here and all I have to do is search for it and I'm not entirely sure what the difference between these is install or install system. I'm going to pick the first one. Let's see what happens. And this is the Calamari's installer. It goes to a full screen by default. I'm not entirely sure the reason for that. Uh, many other distros are using Calamari's and I can't think of any others that force this full screen layout like this. That's fine. Uh, you know, it's a minor criticism, but it does things like obviously this logo is being enlarged way too much and doesn't look great. And as you, you'll see as I go through here, the spacing on this stuff is a little weird because of it. But again, very minor criticism. You see here's just all of this extra space is a little odd. But okay, let's jump through this. I'm going to keep the defaults here for me. Erase the disk. I do wish that like Manjaro, they would include the option to have a swap partition uh, as part of this installation, which they don't seem to have here. I'm going to say next, and we'll say Ubuntu. Better if I could spell it. Ubuntu Cinnamon. All right, next. Show me what I'm doing here, and let's go ahead and install. All right, so I'm back after installing. Let's go ahead and log in here, and I wanted to take a look at that desktop layout switcher, so we'll start there. All right, so back at Linux++, the announcement is talking about cool improvements to the overall look and feel, which I'm not seeing because it's the same theme and everything, so I'm not sure this Kimo. And, you know, there might have been some improvements there that I'm not seeing, but yeah, uh, it kind of looks the same. But uh, hey, I'll look and see if I can find some release notes. I couldn't find any. I didn't see anything on SourceForge, so um, just kind of going by what I remember from the 1910 version. What I definitely want to look at here is the Cinnamon Layout tool, and so they say you can just run it with Cinnamon Layout. I created a quick shortcut here on the desktop, a launcher. So I'm a big fan of these kinds of tools because it really makes it easy to get started just you know, with a quick layout, and then you can tweak it from there. And then also, I think the people that are not familiar with customizing Cinnamon, this is a good way for them coming maybe from another operating system or another desktop environment to quickly get a certain look and feel. So we're on default here, which gives you the panel with the icon window list and the taller bar and the uh, taller panel down here. So let's take a look and see what traditional looks like. And they're saying Windows XP inspired layout. So I'm guessing this is just going to be a slightly thinner panel. Yep. And it looks like it restarts your session. Yep. So it made the panel a little thinner here, a little shorter, and switched from the icon task manager or icon window list to this more verbose sort of uh, detailed version. All right. And the menu looks the same and everything else looks the same. Yeah. All right. So let's take a look at the Redmond 7, which is going to be 
Windows 7 inspired layout with group window list. Okay. Oh, so XP is non group. So if I were to open another copy here, see it's not. Okay. Makes sense. Then let's try this one. This looks a lot more like the default layout where you have the icon window list and I'm guessing it does group them. Yeah. And you get the little number there. So that's, that's very similar to what Cinnamon does by default. All right. Let's take a look at Cupertino. So I'm guessing we're going to get a dock here on the bottom and it's going to put a bar on the top. And that is exactly what it did. And also, if you notice, it moved the window controls over to the left instead of being on the right. All right. Well, that's a nice quick way to get that dock view. It's interesting because I've actually never run a dock with cinnamon and uh, just never really considered doing it but certainly looks okay if i look this is plank which makes sense all right i like that let's see what else did we have here unity so that's going to be larger panel on the left and then smaller panel on the top so i'm guessing this will be about the same and then it's just going to put a remove this stock and then put a docker panel on the left here and sure enough and there you go that's nice little fly out menu and very familiar layout there i like that window control back to the right all right and we had one more or two more widescreen so left panel and i'm guessing that'll take away the bar on the top yep sure did and this is going to be great for a, a laptop screen where you've got more horizontal real estate than vertical and it reminds me a lot of actually mx linux uh, they put the bar on the left like this it's a xfc but they put their panel to the left all right and we had one more there and on two so this is going to be panel on the top panel on the bottom and then different there'll be like the window switcher and things like there the desktop switcher things like that and sure enough there you go okay and that's very familiar for let's say mate users which is also usually comes with a default gnome 2 layout like this and uh yeah if you like that layout that's great so again this is really just a handy way to be able to quickly switch desktop layouts and then give you a starting point and i would say that besides the cupertino option in here it's doing everything just with default cinnamon panels so it's nothing you couldn't do on your own but it just makes this just makes it so much easier to get to that quick layout and then tweak from there so that's a very nice addition i think that's going to be very helpful for people to have that otherwise i don't have much else to talk about because like i said they claim that there are some changes in here but i'm really not seeing them i wonder if maybe there are some more default applications. I know that was one of the things I noticed on the 1910 release. So the initial release was that there were there were really only a few uh, applications and things like an image viewer, which honestly I'm still not seeing here. I guess Gthumb. Yeah. So I, I just noticed that on 1910 there seemed to be some core basic system apps that weren't there. But in this case, it does look like they've maybe added a few things. So that's really all I've got for this one. As this progresses, maybe I'll take another look. But I'm a big fan of Cinnamon, and I'm really glad that this project exists and apparently seems to be gaining some momentum. And uh, that's a great thing because I love the idea of a mostly vanilla Ubuntu-based Cinnamon. I know the argument to this is that Linux Mint already exists. Well, Linux Mint changes enough things, and it's not exactly vanilla Ubuntu. And also, they only stick to the LTS releases, so it's nice that when you run this, you're on the latest release of Ubuntu. So it will be the 2004 release, so I'm assuming, will also be considered an LTS release that's supported. But again, don't forget, this isn't an official flavor yet, although so I'm, I'd be surprised if it doesn't get adopted at some point. And maybe that's something that come, will come with uh, 2004. So we'll see. All right. Well, thanks for taking a look with me. Questions and comments below. Like and subscribe if you do. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.